Sabah everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Pixel 5a 5G. For all intents and purposes, I'll be referring to it as the Pixel 5a for the rest of the video. But this was announced on Tuesday. We did a quick unboxing for you guys on the channel. Today, I feel I have enough information to give you guys my impressions of this device after using it for a few days. Uh, my initial conversation that we're going to cover today, we're going to talk obviously about performance, capabilities, what are the new things from last generations, but not only that, also touching a little bit about temperatures since there's been some conversation regarding that all over the internet. This is TK and today we're going to talk about the Pixel 5a. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, the brand new Pixel 5a 5G. This is essentially what comes in the box. You have the package. Uh, we have a USB-C to USB-C cable here that it also includes an OTG adapter so that we can transfer our data from our old phones to our new one. And of course, the included 18 watt charger that's included in the box. It's also a USB-C connected type style. So everything you need to be able to start using your brand new Pixel 5a 5G. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is that this device is a successor to last year's Pixel 4a. So last year, Google released a Pixel 4a. This is an LTE enabled device for about 350 bucks. And then they also released the Pixel 4a 5G at about $500 or $499. And this gave us the larger or the XL model of the 4a but also gave us the capability of having 5G. We also had the dual sensor camera system in the back. And of course the additional sensor on the bottom, which as you can see right here on the Pixel 5a 5G is no longer there. But this essentially is the evolution. This is actually the, uh, I, I would say this is an actual upgrade to the 4a 5G because in theory, this actually does not really relate too much to the 4a other than by the name or the sequence of events. This device is the largest of all three, supports a 4680 4, milliampere battery, as I mentioned to you guys, an 18 watt charger that's included in the box. Uh, now the 1216 megapixel sensors in the back are pretty much the same that we saw last year. And of course we have an eight megapixel sensor on the front. That's also very much the same. The processor stayed the same, the 765G powering the 4A 5G and the 5A 5G stereo speakers, of course. And of course, the biggest thing that we're going to talk about is the fact that the display is actually bigger. Uh, so first thing we'll notice, obviously, it's a lot bigger than the 5, sorry, than the 4A or the 4A 5G. This one is a 6.2. This is a 6.34 inch 1080p with the 20 by 9 aspect ratio as opposed to the 19 and a half by 9 aspect ratio that we saw last year. So a slightly different form factor, but still an AMOLED display with stereo speakers and of course the headphone jack that we didn't lose. So one microphone on the top, power button that is nicely rigid. Now it's actually very nicely colored. And of course the volume rocker on the bottom, bottom firing speaker married with a top earpiece for stereo speakers, a USB-C. On the left side, we basically have the single SIM trait uh, option here on the left side with a nano SIM option as well. So there is a nano SIM built here and of course an eSIM to support a secondary SIM connection if you want to run two SIM cards at the same time. But the biggest thing that I'll also mention here is that although they're calling it simply black, the color is actually slightly different. And we can definitely see that when we put uh, the Pixel 5a 5G and the Pixel 4a 5G next to each other, there's a little bit more of a greenish tone to it. And you can definitely appreciate the color. Um, although if you have a case on it, for the most part, you're not really gonna notice too much. Uh, fingerprint sensor is pretty much in the same spot as I feel like this is the perfect spot for it. Now, as far as the specification, as I mentioned, the 765G is the processor. We have 5G connectivity. We also have six gigs and 128 gigs of internal storage. So it's pretty much the same what we saw last year with the 4A 5G. So you may be wondering what are some of the uniqueness or unique features on the 5A that weren't on the 4A 5G. So first thing I will say is this has a water resistance of an IP67. So water and dust resistance are built in in here. Uh, we also have a bigger display. This is a 6.34 inch 1080p 20 by nine aspect ratio. This one was a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio, slightly different as well. And the last thing we also wanna cover is the fact that this is actually featuring a 4680 milliampere uh, battery that is much larger than what we saw with the 3800 milliampere that we saw last year with the 4A 5G. So not only do we get a bigger display, we get a uh, brighter display that goes up to 800 nits, but we also have IP67. And of course uh, we have a bigger battery to last us even longer with the well, the configuration that we have in here as well. Um, on the left, we have the Google feed. And of course, we have everything pretty much standard to Android 11. And this is going to be one of the first devices to get Android 12. Now, currently, I am running Android 12 on my Pixel 4a, one of my uh, devices that I feel like if this can run it well, anything can run it really, really good. 
So there's no question that that's one of the other benefits of getting when you do pick up a Pixel smartphone um, in 2021 or any any year. Uh, notification panel, configuration, everything is pretty much standard. I think this is running uh, as far as the security patch update, June 1st. So hopefully we'll get the uh, latest security patch update pushed out to it. Now, before we jump into the camera, let's talk a little bit more about performance. Uh, I went ahead and installed Geekbench and I ran the Geekbench score. So I was able to get 585 for the single score, 1,273. Again, we have the 765G as the processor here. So if we jump down to basically roughly where it goes, it's faster than the 720G, but somewhere lower than the 855. And that's roughly what you're going to get with this device. It's a mid-range processor. It was a great mid-range processor for 2021, and it still is a very capable, and as you can see, it's still downloading some more information. Uh, it's still a very capable smartphone in 2021. Um, as far as speed test, of course, this has 5G. So let's go ahead and just jump in real quick to some of my results. Um, I ran a few speed tests. Initially, it was only picking up on LTE and I was able to get up to 272 down with 28, uh, sorry, 272 down and 28, eight up. And then when I was able to launch, uh, log into or actually connect to a 5G connection, as you could see, almost 500 with 131 up. And of course, this is running on T-Mobile in the US. I went ahead and disabled the Wi-Fi. As you can see, it picks up sub six, 5G, no problem at all. Uh, but again, performance wise, again, one of the best options that you can get as far as uh, mid range processors, the 765 is a very powerful one. Now we have dark mode, as you can imagine, I activated it and customized everything out of the box. It's actually part of the setup. Now when you're setting up pixel devices, it actually asks you if you want to jump in directly into a dark mode to help you conserve some more battery. Now jumping in into the camera application, again, eight megapixel front facing shooter, uh, a 12 and a 16 megapixel sensor. The 12 is the standard focal length and the 16 is going to be our ultra wide 4k 60 will be the best that we can shoot here on the main sensors and of course on the front they're going to be 1080p uh, which will be the best uh, we're able to shoot as far as uh, the front facing camera uh, we have the portrait photography night side uh, a lot of different configuration camera options of course standard uh, we have video modes between just standard and uh, two time uh, digital zoom slow motion and you can go between times eight or times four Lastly, we also have time lapse stabilization between locked, active, and cinematic pan at 24 frames per second. So a lot of nice configurations. And of course, you can customize your experience between 4K, 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second. The front facing camera, we don't get a lot of configuration, but for the most part, it's 1080p. And again, we have the ability of using a slightly cropped in or standard time lapse as well from the front facing camera is very nice. Lastly, we have photosphere, panorama, and of course, Google Lens. Let me give you guys a quick sample of the front facing and the back facing sensor video from the Pixel 5a 5G. We're gonna start off with the front facing sensor here on the Pixel 5a. And this is capable of shooting 1080p video, no 4K, but we do have some of those options on the back facing sensor. This should be a pretty good example of front facing video and audio from the Pixel 5a. Now, when we switch it over to the back facing sensor, this is where we're able to shoot all the way up to 4K, 60 frames per second. Uh, and again, we're able to also shoot different modes uh, between uh, slow motion, uh, pan, uh, cinematic pan with 24 frames per second. There's a lot of options we can do with the main sensors on the back. Uh, but this is again, the back facing sensor, audio sample and video sample from the Pixel 5a and well, 5G. And as I'm pretty sure you guys saw, the audio in the video will look and sound great. Now for the audio test, we're gonna be playing the same song I usually play on the channel. This is Alex Crindo, NCS release, uh, no copyright music. But I wanted to actually do a comparison to the 4a 5G. So this is the 4a 5G on the right, the 5a 5G on the left. We're gonna start off with the new guy on the block. Uh, volume level is at 100% on both of these devices. And I have them both set at about 52 seconds into the song. And that's basically where the drop is gonna happen. Let's go ahead and check them out. Both of them sounded very, very good. And I don't know if it was just me listening to them first, uh, but I felt like the Pixel 5a sounded a little bit louder. Please let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think? Which one sounded better? Uh, but overall, as far as performance and what we're looking at this device, again, there's a lot of heritage here. And of course, this is really going to be the only solution that we have in 2021 uh, for a five or an A series a smartphone from Pixel or from Google. And that's, I feel like the right solution. They decided to go with the larger display they gave us a larger battery, uh, stuck with the same configuration that worked with them great last year. Of course, we have six gigs, 128 gigs of internal storage, leverage with obviously online storage if you need additional storage there since we can't expand it. 
But as far as the actual performance and what we're getting here, this is a solid foundation and it's something that I feel like for anybody that's looking to carry a smartphone in 2021 for many years to come, this is definitely going to meet that and not only that, exceed your expectations. Because we're talking about computational photography here that Google is known for. Now I posted this image this morning of my cat, he's sleeping on the couch but he was sunbathing and you could appreciate the quality of the images that we're looking at here. And of course, I'm sharing with you guys some more images right now. This is definitely one of the main reasons why people actually love Pixel smartphones. You really cannot go wrong for any kind of imagery, even photography and videography right now on a Pixel. Now, my impressions are obviously after using this device for about a couple of days, but I will say this. Being that I've used the 4A 5G and I've used the 4A for a lot longer than the 5A 5G, I can attest to how does these devices or how do they actually uh, stand and actually function after some time. Google is known for dropping additional features and new features as time goes on to their Pixel lineup. The 4A 5G is not going to be an exception. It is again running the best of the mid-range processors that we saw in 2020. Um, they decided not to go with the latest and greatest uh, processors and I feel like there's no real big need there. The 765G is very capable. Again, 4K 60 frames per second on the main sensor on the back and of course 1080p 30 frames per second on the front. I think that will meet all expectations and exceed them. You may have noticed that there's some conversations going on regarding thermal concerns with the Pixel 5a 5G. Um, and that was regarding recording 4K on the, on the device and having thermal issues after a few minutes or so. So I wanted to run my own experiment and I actually, my test was done indoors. I had my camera propped against the bottle, water bottle and I was recording in basically a video of my refrigerator. Uh, and stabilization was done on normal, so I didn't really do much as far as just turning it on, going to 4K 60 and allowing it to record. Uh, the thing was able to actually, or the device was able to record up to 19 minutes and two seconds of a continuous shot. It was one shot that went for that long. And about that time when I started getting the thermal concern, or essentially telling me that the device temperature went up, uh, was basically high enough. And when I did measure the temperature, it was about 105 or so, almost 110, um, basically on the display from my end. Again, that was a situation where I felt like I was pushing the limit of how long can I go 4K 60 on the Pixel 5a 5G. I feel like 19 minutes is a very long duration if you think about it. But keep in mind that this device does have some limitation. The design on this device is a little bit different because when I ran the same exact test on my 4a 5G, I was able to go all the way to 27 minutes before I hit the same limitation. And that device does not have the same metal construction on the inside. So there's a little bit of a different construction internally to the, to the 5a 5G than what we had with the 4a 5G, meaning it's holding a little bit more of the temperature as opposed to releasing it the way the 5a 5G was doing or the 4a 5G was doing. Now, is that a deal breaker? Is that something that we should be concerned? Uh, my thing I would say is this, understand the limitation of what the device can provide you. Keep in mind if this is something that you are looking for in a smartphone, then maybe the 4A 5G or the 5A 5G may not be the right device for you. But if you're looking for a good budget smartphone in the A series of pixels that will receive the latest updates, great camera performance with the computational photography that Google is well known for, I think the 4A 5G and the 5A 5G are very good smartphones. Now, the 5A 5G is on pre-order, it will be available in the next couple of weeks, and I will be doing my full review of this device coming up in the week or so. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit more conversation or information about how things have been going on. Now, gaming on this are obviously not going to be a problem. 765 is a very good processor and it's been well tested over the, over the years. And I'll definitely show you guys some clips of those in the full review. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the 5A 5G? Are you as excited as I am? Again, it may not look exciting, but this device actually gives us a lot of opportunity and a lot of potential for anybody on a budget that's looking for a smartphone that not only meets, but exceeds their expectations. This is TK. I'll see you in the next video.